All right, let's talk about ionic bonds. We're going to start off with these two neutral atoms. You have sodium and you have chlorine. Now, what does sodium want to do to get a full outer shell? In order for sodium to get a full outer shell, it has to lose this outer electron. If it loses this outer electron, then this inner shell becomes the outermost shell. The outside thing is gone and you just have these left. And so it wants to get rid of that outer electron. Now let's look at chlorine. Chlorine has seven electrons in its outer shell. So it wants to gain an electron. This is kind of a pretty good situation. Sodium can lose its electron to chlorine. Now both have full outer shells. But now here's something that's gotten tricky. If you start with a neutral atom and you remove one electron, guess what happens? Well, you have a little bit less negative than you used to. You have the same amount of positive, and so now the atom has a positive charge, a plus one charge, or just can be written as just a plus charge. Over here, chlorine has gained an electron. Remember, electrons have negative charges, so it has a, one more negative charge than it used to. So its charge is now negative one, which can be abbreviated just with, a, with just one minus sign. So now these two things are oppositely charged. The sodium ion is positively charged. The chlorine ion is negatively charged, and things that are oppositely charged attract. And that's what creates the ionic bond. Let's take a look at a nice little animation. This is sodium and fluorine. We see that sodium gives its electron to fluorine. Now they have opposite charges, and that causes them to pull together. Ionic bonds are basically have the following steps. First, one of the atoms gives one or more electrons to the other atoms. They become oppositely charged, and then they pull together. You guys are going to do quite a few problems where you explore the various different ways that ionic bonding can happen.